Hey, welcome to another great video from MXWrencher.com. Dirt Bike Mike here, standing along Corbin Farmer, AKA the Corbinator. Corbin, what are we gonna be showing them how to do today in glorious HD video, bud? <laughs> today we're gonna talk about race sag. What is it? Why do we adjust it? Number one, it's the, one of the single most important adjustments that you can make to your bike. What it does, it ensures the right, correct ride height for the weight of the rider and that will affect how the bike and the suspension works on different terrains for different tracks, different trails. And remember, a happy bike, a balanced bike, as far as suspension goes, is a fun and fast bike to ride. Hey, I know that feeling. All right, so cool. What are we going to be doing today? We're going to get into this thing and set mm -hmm. it. What are we going to start off with? Okay, the first thing we're going to do is take an unloaded measurement, which means, again, there's the rear wheel is at rest. We're going to okay. adjust basically the preload on the rear spring. Okay, that, okay, would that be with the bike on the stand or off the stand? On the stand. On the stand, on the so stand. we're going to take a measurement. All right, Correct. great. Okay, a couple things we're going to need first to do this adjustment is we're going to need a tape measure, a punch or screwdriver, okay. and a mallet. And that's pretty much all we're going to need today. Okay, all right. simple enough. All right, the first thing we want to do is take our unloaded measurement. Um, you want to pick a, a two points, one at the axle basically, and a fixed point at the rear end of okay. the bike. All right. Okay, the first measurement we want to take is the unloaded, the rear wheel at rest measurement. You want to pick a fixed spot in your rear axle, typically the center of it, and a fixed spot on your rear fender. I'm going to pick the very back of my number plate. Measurement is 24 inches. So that measurement, what we're going to do is write it down on our notebook. One of the very most important tools that you can have in your garage is a pen and paper. You always need to write things down from tire pressure to rear suspension measurements to valve adjustments. We're going to use it a lot, so make sure you got it. So the next measurement we're going to do is we're going to take uh, all of our riding gear, put that on. We want to make sure that we have enough fuel in our tank, the oil capacity is correct, the coolant's topped off, tire pressure set. All those kind of adjustments for when you're going to roll out on the track, that's the scenario you want to be in. Okay, so we're going to take a measurement now loaded. All right, so we got our two measurements. You take the first measurement and subtract from the second one, that equals your race sag. And again, we want to be between 90 millimeters and 110 millimeters. Transfer that into inches, that's 3.5 inches to about 4.3 inches. Do you always pray before you set your sag? <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, every time. Goes to show you a little prayer never hurts even with their bike maintenance, right? Yeah, exactly. I bet Jesus knows how to set his sag. Mm -hmm. Okay, Corbin, so tell me what we just did and then what we're gonna do next. Okay, we've, we've checked it the second time for our measurement, okay, after we got loaded up with our gear and everything of the sort. Okay. And we found out that we're outside our parameters or towards the top of our parameters, the 90 millimeter to the 110 millimeter. Okay. I was at 108 millimeter, and I want to move it towards the center of that measurement. Get right in the sweet spot. Correct. Okay. So, you got to think, if, if the spring is loose, to a point the preload is looser than tighter, and I'll explain that in a few minutes, your adjustment, your sag is gonna be more, okay? Because it's gonna be looser, it's gonna be softer. Okay, so what we're gonna do to make our adjustment is there's two locking nuts on top of the spring. They're called spanner nuts, but they really look like big uh, washers, okay. okay? There's two of them. The, the one that's uh, touching the spring is called the adjustment. The one that's on top is the one that locks it in place. Okay, and they've got notches in them to where you can use a special tool. We're going to use a screwdriver or a punch. Gotcha. All right. Let's do it. So with this one, what we're going to do is we're going to make the spring stiffer, which means we're going to crank it down. Okay. So I think I'm getting this, that the real point of setting the sag is putting the shock in a position. It's kind of like putting the shock in its sweet spot. Like, have you ever played mm -hmm. tennis before? Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. if you hit the ball right in the center of the tennis racket, it's like effortless. The yeah. racket does all the work. Now, if you move right. that ball to the top or the bottom of that racket, you know, it twists your arm, the shot goes crazy. Mm -hmm. So it would seem to me like by setting your sag, you really are taking the combination of your bike's weight and your weight and you're helping the shock to find its sweet spot. Correct. That's so exactly that, what so that in fact it's not overreacting or underreacting mm -hmm. to the terrain based on your weight. Is that right? Correct. Right. Okay, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna loosen the top locking spanner nut. Okay, you can get to this on a Yamaha 
from moving the Kickstarter. You don't need to take the swing arm or anything else of the sort off. If you look back in here, you can see both uh, spanner nuts. The top one is the locking, the bottom one is the adjusting. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to we want to loosen the top one so we can make our adjustment. Okay, make sure you loosen it up enough to where you have enough room to adjust your your adjusting nut, and then we'll tighten it down when we're done making the adjustment. Okay, so we have the locking adjuster loose, the locking nut are loose. What we need to do is grab the spring by hand and twist it whichever way we need to go, softer or stiffer. As you're turning the spring, whichever way you're going, softer or, or stiffer, you wanna make sure that you're adjusting spanner nut twists as well, it turns, because this, those are on, that is on threads, and that's what's gonna hold your adjustment. Okay, so if, you're talking about the one that's not the locking one, but the one that's below that. Correct, the second one. Okay. So okay. If, you're, if you're just spinning the spring, that's not gonna adjust anything. You need okay. to make sure that it's, that it's spinning as well. All right, so we made our adjustment. What we need to do now is tighten down the top spanner nut, the locking nut, onto the adjusting nut, the one that we spun. And then we need to recheck our measurement with all our gear on. Gotcha, let's do it. Okay, so we got just over, just over 20 inches, 20 and something I couldn't even measure. We calculated it at about 101 millimeters, so that's right there in the sweet spot. 90, 100 being in the middle, perfect. Okay, so we hope you enjoyed today's video, you know, and as a result of the things that Corvin showed us today, which I did learn several things, thank you very much. You, if you follow these, should have a bike that's much more in tune with you out there. You'll now have a suspension that has the proper foundation so that it's not gonna be overreacting and underreacting to the terrain, making you a better rider and probably probably will take less out of them, right? Right. I mean, you probably can ride longer if you have a bike that's working with you instead of against you. I mean, right, exactly. <laughs> makes sense to me, <laughs> right? We'll see you on the next one. Hope you have a great one. AKA Dirt Bike Mike, Corvinator, we're out. We'll see you on the next one. Call me. Today we're gonna to check the muffler bearing operation and the proper adjustment for those. Muffler bearing <laughs> operation. Is that, is that right next to the canifelin pin or the Stratoport valve? Yeah, the, the, the piston return spring helps the operation with this because of the vacuum and the, the ultraviolet rays that come out of the, the motor. Is that right? Is that a Kirby vacuum or a rainbow vacuum? It's a Dyson. It's, it's, it's modern technology. Oh. <laughs>